public library became another institution that Asian Americans went to to demand that their needs be met because they are part of the public citizenry and that they pay taxes. Just because they don't read in English, they should not be night service because you could certainly provide materials in other languages for them. This library doesn't exist anywhere in the United States. It's the first library catering to the, the library needs of an Asian population. Language means to me culture, your language that you carry on, your, your heritage. It was almost like family because we all have to help each other out. We have all the language staffs out here. Even when they're busy, they really chat it up with the patrons. It's a very kind of special, tight-knit community. I, was, I think I was doing some of the publicity work for the library. In fact, I wrote the proposal with the idea of a separate branch for the Asian library and represented the library at, in Sacramento to present the proposal. They got the grant um, approved and uh, the library funded in 75 and they hired me uh, right off the bat to begin building this library. It was pretty much what I would have wanted to see in a proposal and pretty much what I agreed to do and that is to, to do a lot of outreach and to do a lot of collection development and a lot of program planning. The proposal talks about the larger Asian American demographic population. We decided, I decided, that we needed to serve mainly the Chinese, the Japanese, the Korean, and the Filipino. And even before we opened our doors in 1976, Vietnamese refugees were flooding into the area. So we quickly add Vietnamese. That meant hiring staff that know those languages and that would be good community-oriented like yeah. resistance. We all work together really well. We just did whatever we had to do, regardless of the classification, of the title, or whatever. Through those years, all the staff worked together as a community group to bring out um, the harmony of the different Asian communities together. We had to think about serving the larger Bay Area. We had patrons, the patrons who didn't live in the area or even in Oakland, come from the larger Bay Area on weekends to raid our shelves. The bookmobile became very important almost from the very beginning because we figured, okay, it's even no matter how where you put the library, not everyone can get to it easily. Even at Park Boulevard, we knew that we need to go to Chinatown and we need to go to other parts of the city where there are Asian immigrant populations and Asian American population. I knew from the beginning too that we had to have an Asian American collection in English. The first year we were outgrowing the branch and we were already thinking we got, we got to grow, we need more space. So we had been in communication with the administration. You know, Lee White was the sea librarian then and she was always very pro-Asian branch library and she was, you know, always giving us 200% of her support. So while we were waiting to find a bigger place in Chinatown, which is our goal, um, they decided to move us into the ground floor of the main library. During those two years, we got development money. Yeah. It was finding um, a place to buy and we selected the corner spot at 9th and Broadway because of this location and also it's more spacious and it's what we could afford. There was a new Saigon market next door to us. Sometimes the parents would dump their kids in the library on Saturdays and go shop. And then the kids would read books and attend the story time until it's ready for the parents to leave. So there's a lot of food traffic at the library. It's next to a supermarket. Vietnamese book because you know, that's what they, they have 
staff that speak Vietnamese and the book variety. I guess they feel more comfortable here than at the other library. There were emerging communities. The Thai allowed the Cambodians. So that's when I said, if we can hire library assistants with those language skills, then we can start building those collections. During that time, redevelopment had a way to offer jobs. I feel the libraries with me and I'm with the library to carry on those heritage like a language. When the people have a Cambodian New Year's a traditional ceremony, but they come to the library. I don't have those knowledge, but I prefer people to pull out the book. They were already talking about the Pacific Renaissance, even before I left. And that was in 81, and the library was already considering taking the bottom floor. In 89, we knew that redevelopment started, and we knew we wanted child care, we wanted affordable housing, we wanted the culture center, we wanted the library. The developer gave us a deal. We will build the Asian library on the ground floor, the Asian culture on the second floor. And we were ecstatic. Like, our own bathroom. Look at the children's section, it's so big. I love this new library. <laughs> the computer lab came in 2004, so we started teaching as simple as using a mouse, using the keyboard, browsing the internet, getting your own, own email. 70, 80 years old. They open up their email and then they show it to me. You know, I was able to help them to make a connection with their family back home. The library counter is like my second home because even though I'm at school more, I actually treasure this place a lot. Mm -hmm. Because it's just, I have so much memories in this place. I've practically grown up here. Yeah. And just like the comfort level that teams had in here. Is not necessarily the comfort level that I've seen teenagers having in other libraries. Mm -hmm. you know, like they, it is kind of like a home. They come here and they don't necessarily engage with the library like a library. They engage with it like it's a, an extension of where they belong. Friday after school is like a lot of people because everybody goes to the library mm -hmm. to like do their homework and play computer and everything. I mean, there are tables, but then. It's, uh, half the time I'm here, they're mostly like crowded around. Sure. I have like a couple options. I could work on the bookshelves, so I could just like stand up and do my homework. Mm -hmm. Or I can go onto the stage. Or I can bring like a chair there and just work on the chair. Just the first uh, year I was there, I look at it and say, I'm not going to stay here too long. There's no space to do anything. So we figure out if we do the program upstairs, uh, we do the advisory group at Starbucks. <laughs> but it's just difficult because the Asian branch serves too many people. We're still getting a lot more Chinese patrons. I guess uh, when they when they come to the United States, so some new immigrants, the first stop is always a library. Mm -hmm. The next day, they get off from the plane. The relative will bring them here or oh, apply for library cards. I think I have developed a very positive cultural identity um, by knowing that I am a Chinese American person and I do not need to feel embarrassed or shameful about reading and writing and speaking Chinese. It's important that any public agency reflect the communities that will use the services and facilities and the Asian branch library in particular, it's one of the most utilized, it's one of the busiest, it needs to be expanded. Uh, it's a gem that hasn't gotten its full support in terms of funding and recognition. The library is a place where we meet friends. 